So by now you know the structure of a molecule given its name and vice versa. But what happens if you don't know its name or functional groups and you're only given a molecular formula? Remember, a molecular formula will tell you the number of each kind of atom in the molecule, but not necessarily the functional group or the overall shape of the molecule. What we have in this case is something called isomerism, where multiple different molecules have the same atoms but arranged in different ways. This year, you need to know about constitutional, also called structural isomers, and geometric isomers. We'll cover structural isomers first, since they're a bit more straightforward. The first kind of structural isomerism is branch chain isomerism. Imagine you're given the molecular formula C5H12. What possible molecules could this be? Well, you can start by drawing out the simplest version you can imagine. Start with a 5-carbon chain alkane and check that the number of hydrogens makes sense. Remember, each carbon needs 4 bonds. In this case it does, and congratulations, you've discovered one isomer, pentane. But hold on, what if the structure is a little more complicated? What if there are functional groups, and it's not a simple alkane? Well, look at the formula again. There's no oxygen, no halogens, and if you try to make an alkene or alkyne, you'll find you have too many hydrogens for your carbons. The only kind of molecule this one can be is an alkane. And the only way you can make an alkane different to the one we've already found is to see if there are branch chain isomers. The only way to do this really is to just draw them out and see what you can find. The next simplest isomer of this molecule is 2-methylbutane. Awesome, now there's one more. You might think you can put a methyl group on carbon 3 instead of carbon 2 and find a different isomer, but remember your naming rules. Start naming from the end closest to the functional group. So if carbon 3 is attached to the methyl group, it'll become carbon 2. Don't get caught in that trap. The final isomer, and trickiest to find, has two methyl groups attached to a carbon in the primary chain. 2,2-dimethylpropane. So there you go. All the isomers of C5H12, which are all branch chain isomers. The best way to find these is to find the simplest single chain molecule and then mess around making the chain shorter and adding methyl groups, all the while checking that you have the right number of hydrogen atoms and that each carbon atom has four bonds. Branch chain isomers will have very similar physical properties. The next kind of structural isomerism is position isomerism. Let's say that you're given the formula C3H7Cl. There is only one kind of organic substance that this formula can represent, and that's a haloalkane. What else do we know about this molecule? Well, there are three carbon atoms, so we also know that the basic molecule is going to be propane. There can't be any branch chain isomers with only three atoms, as a methyl group would have to be attached to an end carbon, and thus must be part of the primary chain. Let's draw the most obvious chemical that matches up with this formula. This chemical is called 1-chloropropane. However, there is also a second molecule that fits the formula of C3H7Cl, and it's this thing here. We have moved that single chlorine atom over to the middle carbon, and in the process we've wound up with a different chemical, which is called 2-chloropropane. Never let yourself get fooled into thinking that just because these two things have the same formula that they're somehow the same. 1-chloropropane and 2-chloropropane are different chemicals, though they will have similar physical and chemical properties. The final kind of structural isomerism is functional group isomerism. This is when the functional group itself has changed, rather than just changing position. Consider C3H4. A quick look will show you that the functional groups of this must be double or triple bonds, since there aren't enough hydrogens to distribute over an alkane. Drawing out the primary chain and putting in extra bonds until there are four bonds left over for carbon will give you two possible isomers. Prop 1,2-diene and propine. Check for yourself. The molecular formula of both of these is C3H4, and all carbons have four bonds. 
Functional group isomers have very different physical and chemical properties. 